Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? Right, so why? Because just like we said before, you're holy, you're holy, brother. You holier than that cigarette, all right? You're holy, brother, right? You're holy. God says that your body is a temple, right? Come on. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? The Bible says the Spirit of God dwells inside of you, right? The Spirit of God, right? The Spirit of God is supposed to be inside of you, brother. But when you smoke cigarettes, right, you, 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 the, the Spirit can't dwell there. Right, you defiling your temple. It want to leave, right? Do you want the spirit of God to leave you? Do you want that to happen? No, you don't want the spirit of God to leave you, bro. Right? You don't want when you smoke cigarettes, it's destroying your body. It's destroying your temple. Right. You need to take care of that thing. The Most High God gave you a body. You ain't you can walk. You understand? You can breathe. You ain't on crunches, but you polluting that thing, right? You 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 putting uh uh. Uh, uh, bad, bad resources into yourself, right? You destroying that thing, man. That's like a smack in the face. Somebody gave you something precious, right? But you treating it like it ain't nothing. You understand what I'm saying? You gotta stop smoking. Put the cigarettes down, right? Was that it on that? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. You heard what the Bible said? You heard what the Bible said? Yeah. If you defile the temple, what's gonna happen? If you defy your temple, what's gonna happen? You gonna be destroyed. Don't nobody want destruction for themselves. That's right. Don't nobody want that. Is a cigarette worth your life? It, yes or no? No, it's not. So if it's not worth your life, is a cigarette worth your soul? No, it's not. A cigarette is not worth your soul, right? You know what we're talking about right now? Smoking cigarettes. You smoke. Your body a temple, bro. You should not do that thing. Read it again from the top. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? The Spirit of God should dwell in you, brother. You believe in God? You believe in the Bible? Sometimes. Sometimes? What you mean? You believe in it when you feel like doing right, and then when you feel like doing wrong, you don't believe in it no more? Is that what I mean? Uh, All right, what it mean? Uh, it mean like, it work. And it work. like sometimes, sometimes stuff be hard. Like the stuff you go through, and then when you be trying. Oh, uh, Matthew five like, forty eight. Read that or uh, say it again. Like sometimes when you going through stuff, going through pain or something, you can't always count on God on certain situations. Why not? Because of what you go through. And like, you can always count on God, brother. That's right. You can always count you on can, God, you man. You can pray. You can pray. You can pray. You can pray, but I'm going to teach you something, man. I'm a, you got you got some time? Yeah, you do. All right. Oh, oh, we're going we gonna to build with you, right? Because we out here hoping that all these men become holy. Right. And keep God's law. Right. Do the will of God. All right? right. That's our hope for everybody that's out here, right? right. Read what you got. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 48. Bring it up. Be ye therefore perfect. What's the Bible say? Be ye therefore perfect. The Bible says be perfect. Be perfect, right? Yeah. Yeah. What makes us perfect? God's laws. All right? God's laws make us perfect, right? right? You know how you're perfect? You're perfect when you recognize, right, that you've done something wrong, right? And, and, you, and you pray to God for forgiveness for that thing, right? And then you don't go back and keep doing the same thing. That makes you perfect. That's repentance, according to the Bible. Making a what? A change. A change. That's what we need to do, right? That makes you perfect. Perfect don't mean you'll never make no mistakes. You understand what I'm saying? That's not what perfect means, according to the Bible, right? Perfect means that you're striving to become better and better and better and better, and you recognize that you commit sin, and you should not do that ever again. You need to keep repenting and keep repenting. It's a process, you understand? All right, drop that John 9, 31. Because you say you pray to God, but you can't pray to God for everything. That's what you said, right? Maybe. Rephrase it for me. You said it, say it, say it for me again. Say what you got. Like, you can't always count. Well, I, well, I believe in God, but I can't count on him for everything. We about to give you the cheat code right here, man. So, you, so we about to give you the cheat code, all right? We about to put you on, right? We about to help you with this Bible. You got a Bible, right? So we about to help you with this Bible, all right? Read what you got. This is the book of John, chapter 9, verse 31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. No, the Bible does hear sinners. Now we know that God heareth 
not sinners. Now the Bible here, everybody that pray to him for all their problems. Every time you got a problem, right? What's your name? OJ. OJ. Every time you got a, if, 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 as long as I'm OJ, the Lord gonna listen to me. That's how we be thinking, right? Read what you got. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. The Bible say he don't hear sinners. He don't hear sinners. He don't hear nobody that's breaking God's laws. He don't listen to that. If you're breaking God's laws, you're not trying to get yourself right, you just out here. You understand? You're just under God's grace, right? You're just out here living until he put you to death. That's really what you're doing, right? When you walk around smoking cigarettes, you ain't really trying to quit, right? You understand what I'm saying? You walk around uh, 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 plotting to commit crime, right? You might not be trying to do that, but there might be other things that you're doing, right? You might be looking at somebody, woman, and she married to somebody. You understand what I'm saying? It's a lot of things like that that go through our mind. A lot of evil that dwells within us, right? And when you're not trying to change from that, you're just out here living until you get put to death. You, you understand what I'm saying? You don't want to be walking around like that. That's the living day. You don't want to be walking around like that, right? That's not how you want to live. What you got? What you got? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Read that. It's a book of Proverbs, chapter 28 and verse 9. Come on. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. The Bible says, look, if you don't hearken to the Bible and you keep going on to do your own will, you understand? Your prayer is going to be what? Shall be abomination. Your prayer is going to be an abomination. Abomination is filthy, right? It's something that's nasty, right? Something that's despised. That's how the Lord look at your prayer when you're not keeping his commandments, right? Get first John chapter 3. You know what I want? I think it's verse 21 or 22. All right? This is this is the cheat code right here. We're about to tell you if you want your prayers answered by the Lord, this is what you got to do. Read what you got. This is the book of first John chapter 3 verse 22. And whatsoever we ask, Whatsoever we what? Whatsoever we ask. How do you ask to get things from God? How do you ask to get things from God? By praying and by fasting, right? Right, so when you're keeping God's commandments, you praying and fasting, OJ, you gotta get the code. You ain't even got it yet. Uh-uh, you gotta get the code. I can't let you walking away from here just thinking that you can just continue to live and do whatever you wanna do. And you think you think God ain't listening to you because God is a, a mean God, they don't care about you. That's not what's going on, right? You a mean child that ain't listening to a parent. You understand? So you a mean child, right? And you're not listening to your parents. Is your parent gonna bless you? Nah, but, but that's how we dealing with the most high God that created us. He gave us his will. He told us what to do, but we don't care about it. And we expect God to bless us? Read what you got. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. We receive the things we ask from God. Why? The Bible says this. Why do we receive those things? Come on. Because we keep his commandments. Because what? We keep his commandments. Right, so a prerequisite to getting your prayers Right, answer from God is to do what? It's to keep God's commandments. That's right. Okay, yep. A prerequisite, right, to, to a prerequisite for you to get your prayers answered by God is to do what? It's to do what? It's to keep the commandments. That's what you have to do. So the reason your prayers ain't getting answered is you need to examine yourself. Get that. Examine yourself, right? 13 and 5. Examine yourself, right? You need to ask yourself, well, what is it that I'm doing that might be preventing God from hearing me, right? The Bible says do these things daily, right? Read what you got. This is the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Examine yourselves. The Bible says examine yourself, right? How do you do that? Come on. Whether ye be in the faith. In what faith? The faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the faith in this Bible, right? You got to ask yourself. Well, what am I doing wrong? You know, am I, am I breaking any commandments? Right? It's a lot of commandments. It's over 600 commandments in the Bible. Did you know that? It's more than just 10. It's a lot of commandments. Some of them pertain to women. Right? Some of them pertain to men. Right? Some of them pertain to men and women. You understand what I'm saying? You need to examine yourself against this Bible to see what am I doing wrong? What am I doing that's, that's I, I'm trying to channel, you know, the most high God, get him to hear my prayers. What's getting in the way of that? Right? Is it me? You gotta ask yourself that. Come on. Prove your own self. The Bible says prove yourself. Right? Prove it with what? The scriptures. Come on. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you? You need to know, right, that the Spirit of the Lord is in you. You need to know that. So the same way Christ walked, you gotta walk. The same way he talked, 
you gotta talk. You understand? The same things he cared about, the same things he hated, right? Those are things you gotta hate. Those are things you gotta detest, right? That's what makes Jesus Christ dwell in you. Come on. Except ye be reprobate. You don't want to be reprobate. It was Psalm chapter one verse five. You don't want to be reprobate. You understand? You don't want to be reprobate. Reprobate means to be just void, just void of, of being able to make decisions between right and wrong. Now you don't know what's wrong and what's right. Everybody just do what they want to do. Yeah, do what feel good. Do as thou will. Right? It's all of these different uh, thought processes out there for us. Right? That's been put out here. Right? By really our enemies have allowed these things to be on our TVs, to be in our media. Right? To be in our households, to be in our homes, to be on social media. All these are, are all these uh, vices are against you, and they keep you into captivity. Read on. It's a book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. The Bible says if you if, if you are a deceitful person, right, and you lack discipline, the Holy Spirit will leave you. That's what the Bible says. Come on. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding. Come on. And will not abide. Will not what? And will not abide. So the Holy Spirit will not stay in you. You understand? Come on. When righteous correction, when unrighteousness cometh in. When unrighteousness cometh in. Right? The Holy Spirit will not abide within you. It will not stay. Right? Uh hold, drop that. Get first Peter's uh the sincere of milk. Desire sincere of milk. Two and two. Two and two. Get that. Right? The Holy Spirit will not abide in you when you have deceit within you. When you have lust. When you have hatred. You understand? Read what you got. This is the book of First Peter, chapter two and verse two. Come on. Wherefore, laying aside all malice. So you gotta put malice away from you. Malice is hatred. You can't have hatred for your brother. You can't be jealous of your brother. You understand? You can't uh, see something that he got and take it. You understand? You can, that's evil. You can't do that. That's what's happening in all these ghettos, right? You know what's happening, right? But the Bible says, don't do that, right? So when you break God's commandments and you do that, right, you, you bring a judgment upon your own self. You ain't even know. You bring a judgment upon your own self. Read on. And all guile, and hypocrisy, and envy, and all evil speakings. You gotta put all of these things away. Jump down to verse 5. Verse 5, read. Verse 5. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up on a spiritual house. We a spiritual house, just like that holy temple we read about. You understand? You're supposed to be a spiritual people. How are you going to be a spiritual people, but you're breaking all of the spiritual rules? That's right. You ain't following none of them. You think you're going to be spiritual? Right? We walk around saying, yeah, I'm spiritual. I don't really deal with God or the Bible, but I'm spiritual. But you're not keeping none of the spiritual laws in the Bible that make you spiritual. Right? Get Romans chapter 7. You're not doing any of that. But you think you're spiritual? It don't, it, that's a, a lie. That's another lie that's been taught to you by your enemy. Does not make any sense. That's right. You understand? Read what you got. This is the book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. The law is what? The law is spiritual. The law is the law in this Bible. That's spiritual, right? This law is spiritual. Get Deuteronomy 23. I think it's verse 17. Is that what I want? The law is spiritual, right? What does that mean? That means that it's things in here that you need to do and things that you can't do. Right? And when you when you do the things, right, that you're supposed to do, what does that make you? You do the things God told you to do. What's that make you? A better person. A better person? Does it make you spiritual? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Read what you got. Uh, this should be your Alright, read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, verse 17. Come on. There shall be no whore. No what? Whore. No what? Whore. You know what a whore is? What is it? Yeah, now why you it depends on time. Oh, it don't depend on nothing, brother. A whore is the same thing here. It's the same thing across the street. A whore is the same thing in Mexico. It's the same thing in Africa. A hoe is a hoe. A whore is a whore. So I'm going to ask you again. You have some time to think about it, right? What's a whore, OJ? Why person that ain't doing better for themselves. Oh, uh, what is it? I can say a person that ain't doing better for themselves. Nah, man, you, uh, nah, man. Hey, my man right here, he going to tell me what a whore. What's a whore? 
A whore. W H O R E. She can't keep my name. Okay, over here. This must be the. Okay, I got something for you too. Right? I got something for you. Read what you got. Read what you got. This is a book of Deuteronomy 23, verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. You know how we make our daughters whores? How we do that today? Because they don't, they're not just born that way, right? They got to meet somebody and they do what to them? Turn them out. Turn them out. Right? Who doing that? Who doing that today? Who doing it? Who, who, who doing it? Who? Right? I, the people inside of it? The people inside. The people in the society. We part of that society, ain't we? Right? So we doing it. We creating a whole. You understand? It start with you. It start with me. It start with OJ. Right? We gotta recognize a whore for what a whore is. Right? And recognize, oh, she's this way because I'm a whore mother. You understand? I'm a male whore. I'm a male whore. I made it this way. I created that thing. You understand? The Bible says you can't do that. You can't do that. It can't be no whores, no whore mongers. Right? A holy nation can't consist of whores and whore mongers. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.